professor of political science at Loyola University Chicago. I've worked with Paul Rusasa Begina and his foundation for over 15 years now, and have now spent uh, nearly the last two months working with his family and the team to free Paul from his confinement in Rwanda. A brief recap before we go to the lawyers today. After being kidnapped in Dubai, Paul has now been under illegal arrest in Rwanda for 53 days. Sadly, his family still has limited and heavily monitored communication with Paul. In addition, his team of lawyers are just beginning to get access to Paul, which under international law should have happened on day one of his arrest. Several members of Paul's legal team are here with us today to talk about the situation and provide updates on what has been happening on the legal front over the last 10 days. I'd like to be, begin by introducing Peter Robinson, one of Paul's American lawyers, who is acting as the lead lawyer on our legal team to discuss the case and put this into context. Peter? Thank you, Brian. I'm Peter Robinson. I'm a former assistant United States attorney and have been defending accused persons at international criminal courts and tribunals for the past 20 years, including at the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda. I'm serving as lead counsel for the team of lawyers retained by the family of Paul Rosasa Begina to defend him following his illegal transfer to Rwanda. Our team includes lawyers from Rwanda, Belgium, Australia, Canada, and the United States. As you know, Paul Rusasa Begina was taken to Rwanda against his will on August 29th in violation of international law. Instead of presenting a request for extradition or deportation to the United States or Belgium, the Rwandan government took Paul Rusasa Begina to Rwanda by extrajudicial rendition. Once they arrested Paul in Kigali, the Rwandan government kept him tied, bound, and blindfolded for three days before parading him to the news media. Then they provided him with their own defense lawyers. Those of us real lawyers who have been tasked by the family to defend Paul Rusasa Begina have watched in agony as his fake lawyers appeared with Paul in court. They failed to challenge his illegal rendition to Rwanda and they made perfunctory arguments for his provisional release without mentioning his vulnerability to COVID-19, a circumstance that has resulted in the release of thousands of prisoners worldwide during this pandemic. Paul is 66 years old and has heart disease and hypertension. It has now been more than 50 days since Paul was arrested in Rwanda and the government continues to block our team from defending Paul Rusa Begina. When we have sought access to Paul, the Rwandan government has consistently refused on the ground that Paul has never requested to be represented by the lawyers chosen by his family. This is not the case. Paul has told his family, including his daughter Anais, that he has requested to be defended by the team of lawyers led in Rwanda by Gatera Gashambana, Vincent Lurkan, and Philippe La Rochelle. Gatera Gashambana is the former president of the Rwandan Bar Association. He has defended the last two of President Paul Kagame's political opponents who were imprisoned, Victoire Ingaberi and Diana Rigara. He has the courage and the experience to fight for his clients, even in the courts of Rwanda. Vincent Lercan is a lawyer from Belgium who has been representing Paul Rusasa Begina on the very same charges that the Rwandans asked the Belgian authorities to investigate. He has a wealth of experience in international human rights and won acquittals for two Rwandans, a former governor, Emmanuel Bagambiki, and the former police commander, Augustin Ndidliamana, at the United Nations Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda. Philippe La Rochelle is a lawyer from Canada who has also defended clients at the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda and won the acquittal of Jacques Mungawariri, a Rwandan man prosecuted in Canada for alleged crimes during the Rwandan genocide. He is currently in Arusha, Tanzania, where he's about to start a trial defending a Rwandan charged with obstruction of justice. 
We don't understand why the Rwandan government is burdening its taxpayers with paying the legal fees of these government-sponsored lawyers when Mr. Rusas of Begina has lawyers ready, willing, and able to defend him at his own expense. The only explanation for this is that they want to control all aspects of the proceedings, the judge, the prosecutor, and even the defense counsel. We are asking the United States, Belgium, and the European Union not to stand by while fundamental rights of its citizen and residents are being violated. Rwanda must respect international law by returning Paul Rusesa Begina to the United States or Belgium. Thereafter, it's free to make a proper request for his transfer to Rwanda via extradition or deportation, or to have him prosecuted in Belgium. By illegally transferring him to Rwanda and continuing to deny him his right to counsel of his choice, the Rwandan authorities have shown that they cannot be trusted to provide a fair trial for Paul Rusesa Begina. I will now turn this over to Vincent, Philippe, and Anais, to tell you firsthand the efforts that have been made to provide Paul with legal representation and the obstacles that they have faced. Anais? Or perhaps we can go to Vincent first. I see you've joined us, Vincent. Vincent, if you could please give us an update on um, what's happened for with you, starting with your trip to Kigali, and Philippe will be translating for Vincent. Philippe, if you can ask Monsieur Lurkin. Yes, uh, Vincent. Donc, comme on faisait à, à, à l'époque, donc des phrases euh, pas trop longues pour que je puisse euh, traduire intégralement, on va dire. Et voilà, la question est de savoir pourquoi est-ce que l'État rwandais ne veut pas que l'avocat puisse voir son client. Et donc, à quel issue, c'est de savoir de quoi ils ont peur. The issue is to find out, to find out why Rwanda does not allow Paul to meet with the lawyer of his choice. De quoi ont peur? What are they afraid of? Je vais vous raconter en quelques mots le, le, notre voyage et Philippe a participé euh, en grande partie à celui-ci pour essayer de, de, de vous démontrer que la seule, le seul élément qui manque encore dans ce dossier, c'est la parole de Paul Roussessa Bagina. I will tell you what happened when I was in Kigali. And I was myself present um, during some of uh, Vincent's stay in Kigali to try to understand why Paul is denied a safe place. Quand on est arrivé à l'aéroport, déjà on a eu euh, une heure et demie d'interrogation parce que visiblement être avocat est un, un gros mot au Rwanda. If we we may need to ask you to turn off your camera, please. Just to say ban. We were interrogated for an hour and a half because it, being a lawyer is already a problem. Yep. If you could briefly restate that, we lost you for a moment. Be. Il y a des problèmes. Moi, je n'entends plus. Moi, j'entends. Voilà, on peut continuer. Moi, je n'entendais plus. Moi, je suis. So, already, already, when you arrived. So, uh, Vincent was interrogated for an hour and a half when he arrived in Rwanda. Apparently, um, being a lawyer seems to be a problem over there. Quand on arrive à la douane, on vous demande quel est votre nom, quelle est votre profession. Et quand on a dit que l'on était avocat de euh, Paul Rousset Sabagina, directement, on vous a repoussé hors de la file et on a attendu une heure et demie avant quand même de vous laisser passer. So when I arrived at the custom, I stated my name and my profession. I said I was a lawyer and what the, that was sufficient to um, have me kicked out of the lineup and put aside for an hour and a half 
for examinations. Ça, évidemment, ce n'est pas grave, mais l'ensemble du climat de la semaine qu'on va passer au Rwanda est un peu ce climat de, de suspicion sur le fait de dire euh, « Vous êtes à Bagina, c'est un nom dont on ne doit pas parler au Rwanda. » So being put aside for an hour and a half doesn't matter in itself, but what I learned from this is that it seems that Rousse Sabagina is a name that cannot be um, said in Rwanda. Moi, je suis un avocat belge. I'm a Belgian lawyer. Dans le cadre d'une procédure belge. And I, I already represent him in Belgium, so I was going to see him in Rwanda within the framework of uh, my case in Belgium, where, Avec where, un juge where, I, Belge, where I already represent Rousset Sabagina. There is an, a un judge juge in Belgium, Belgium a procureur Belge. So there is a judge in Belgium, there is a prosecutor in Belgium. Pourquoi est-ce que l'avocat Belge de l'accusé qui est belge aussi, puisque M. Roussi Sabagida a la nationalité belge. Why is a Belgian lawyer of a Belgian citizen, because M. Roussi Sabagina is a Belgian citizen, ne pourrait pas voir son avocat? Is, why is Mr. Mr. Roussi Sabagina prohibited from seeing his lawyer, M. Lurkin? D'autant plus que la procédure en Belgique a été demandée par les autorités judiciaires rwandaises. And it's worth outlining that the, the procedure in Belgium was started at the request of the Rwandan authorities. Ça fait près de deux ans qu'on essaye, qu'on interroge M. Roussi Sabagina en Belgique et que je l'assiste pour essayer de prouver qu'il est coupable de quelque chose. It's for, for two years now, The Belgium authorities have been examining Mr. Rousse Sabagina to try to demonstrate that he did something wrong. And I, was, I have been assisting him throughout this process. La dernière audition qu'on a eue devant des enquêteurs belges participait également le procureur général de Kigali et son adjoint. During the last of this hearing, The Attorney General of Rwanda and his um, prosecutor joined were present during the examination of Mr. Prosecutor. The, well, the, the prosecutor of um, there was a prosecutor from Kigali. Et ensemble avec la justice belge, ils interrogeaient Monsieur Roussi Sabagina. And together, Anais, can you... And they, together with the Belgian authorities, they were examining Mr. Rousse Sabagina. Et à ce moment-là, et c'est la dernière fois que je l'avais vu ici en Belgique, M. Rousse Sabagina a dit, je ne répondrai pas à vos questions au euh, procureur rwandais, parce que ces gens-là, a-t-il dit, ils veulent me tuer. During the last of this examination, which is the last occasion where Mr. Lurkin uh, had the chance to see Rousse Sabagina, the prosecutor from Rwanda was trying to ask questions to Mr. Rousse Sabagina. And Mr. Mr. Rousse Sabagina answered them, I will not answer your questions because I know you want to kill me. Heureusement, il n'est pas mort, mais ils l'ont quand même enlevé. So, thank God, he's not dead, but he was nevertheless abducted. Donc, on assiste à un procès qui est un procès uniquement belge, et la seule chose que l'on doit avoir pour voir M. Roussi Sabagina, c'est une attestation du bâtonnier du Rwanda, Kama Ruganda, pour me permettre d'aller le voir à la prison. This is, this is, we will not say enough that this is a Belgian procedure. And this is in the context of that Belgian procedure that Mr. Lurkin, Maître Lurkin was trying to see Mr. Rousse Sabagina in Rwanda. 
And apparently, the only thing that is necessary is an authorization from the head of the Kigali Bar Association, Mr. Kavuraganda. C'est une des choses les plus inacceptables, tant pour Philippe que pour moi, qui est le fait que celui qui a refusé de nous permettre d'aller voir Paul Rousset Sabagina, c'est un de nos confrères, le bâtonnier qui a dit. It is, it is totally unacceptable that the person who is blocking attempts by Maître Lurquin and myself to see Mr. Rousset Sabagina is actually a lawyer from the bar of Belgium, of Brussels in Belgium. Nous avons attendu pendant six jours. We waited for six days. Mais entre temps, il y a quand même des choses positives qui sont passées. Despite this long um, period of waiting, positive things nevertheless happened. La première chose, c'est que le juge d'instruction belge m'a permis d'avoir la copie du dossier de M. Roussissa Bagina, alors que vous savez que en Belgique, l'instruction, c'est secret, est secrète. Nous avons the obtenu first, la copie de son dossier. The first positive um, thing that happened is that the judge d'instruction in Belgium allowed Maître Lurquin to have access to the case file, despite the fact that normally these case files in Belgium are completely confidential. La seconde chose positive, c'est que nous avons obtenu la copie du dossier rwandais de M. Rousset Zabagina qui est en train d'arriver normalement ici en Belgique. The second positive outcome is that we managed to secure the Rwandan file of Mr. Rousset Zabagina and we are hoping to get it soon here in Belgium. Et la troisième chose, c'est que le bâtonnier Gatera est allé à la prison a vu M. Rousset Sabagina et M. Rousset Sabagina a écrit une lettre authentifiée comme quoi le bâtonnier Gatera et moi-même étions ses conseils. The third positive outcome is that Mr. Gatera who, is, who, who has been a bâtonnier of uh, the Kigali Bar Association in the past, has managed to meet with Mr. Rousse Sabagina, and he has obtained a stamped letter certifying that Maître Gatera and Maître Lurquin are Mr. Rousse Sabagina's appointed counsel. Un des éléments quand même essentiels de la défense, c'est le choix du conseil par l'accusé, ce que Rousse Sabagina n'a jamais eu. So, one of the most important components of, the, of a full defense is to be able and to be at liberty to appoint the counsel of one's choice. And Mr. Rousset Sabagina has been denied that right for too long a time. Alors, je vous avoue que je suis assez étonné de la position du bâtonnier Kabaruganda de Kigali, parce que lui, sa solution, c'était la fuite. Il a disparu. The, the attitude of Kava Uganda is actually very surprising because he has effectively disappeared since um, Maître Lurquin has been trying to get a hold of him to obtain the necessary authorization to be able to visit Mr. Rousset Sabagina. Je crois que c'est un élément important aussi avec uh, Maître La Rochelle. On a pu montrer qu'on n'avait pas peur des autorités du Rwanda. That's a, it's, it's actually an important part of it is that we We're able to show that we do not fear the Rwandan authorities. Aujourd'hui, j'ai demandé aux autorités belges de faire en sorte que la commission rogatoire qui devrait partir de Belgique, l'on puisse en faire partie. Today, I have asked the Belgian authorities to be um, to be a member or to be included in the rogatory commission that um, that is ordered by the Belgian authorities. Il n'est pas possible dans le débat judiciaire que vous n'ayez qu'un juge, un procureur, un procureur du Rwanda et que l'avocat soit exclu de ce débat judiciaire. Et donc, je crois effectivement que dans une quinzaine de jours, on va pouvoir retourner au Rwanda, mais là pour revoir Paul Rousset Zabagina. So, it is unacceptable. It would be unacceptable 
that a regulatory commission within the framework of the, of the Belgian procedure takes place only in presence of the judge, the prosecutor, the, prosecu the Belgian prosecutor, the Rwandan prosecutor, without Mr. Rousse Sabagina having the chance to be assisted by the lawyer of his choice. Et donc, je pense que, effectivement, d'ici 15 jours, trois semaines, on pourra retourner au Rwanda avec la commission rogatoire, et là, on verra euh, Paul Rousse et Sabagina. So, normally, that rogatory commission is um, set to leave in two weeks, and I should be a part of it, which would allow me to see Mr. Rousse Sabagina. Voilà, ma première intervention maintenant. Je vous écoute. That's it. I'm now listening to you. Thank you very much, uh, Monsieur Lacroix. Uh, Philippe, if we can ask you to give a little bit of an update too, since you were also in Kigali, and let us know the issues that you ran into in Kigali. Um, just to complete a little bit the, the picture that Vincent has described, I. I myself got to Kigali um, a week or 10 days before Vincent arrived in Kigali. I was going there as part of this uh, trial here in Arusha that Peter has mentioned earlier, but um, I was also going there and I made it clear when I arrived at the airport that I was going to meet, I was going to Rwanda to meet with Mr. Uh, Rousse Sabagina. So the, the reaction of the custom officer was to exactly like uh, what happened to Vincent, to um, put me, um, to ask me to leave the line and to wait for people um, because people would like to speak to me, um, not mentioning what, what they wanted to discuss. Um, so I had to wait for an hour and a half. Somebody came and asked me a few questions about what exactly, who was the client and what I wanted to do. Um, Philippe, unfortunately, we're losing your audio. Brian, why don't you introduce Anais, and we will come back to Philippe if his microphone comes back on. Great, thank you. Um, I'd like to ask Anais Kanimba. Oh, finally, uh, allowed through. I also had uh, for my mission uh, to enter Rwanda. So immediately after I entered Rwanda, I was. I'm sorry. Am I? Back you, you, you cut it. You cut out several times, Philippe. Why don't we try it one more time? And if not, we'll go to Anaïs. If you can just briefly go from the beginning, we lost much of what you said. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? We can. Great. So I will, I'll try to be brief. Uh, I encountered the same difficulties as Vincent in trying to meet with Paul. I encountered the same difficulties with the Batonier. I may even managed to obtain a letter from my Batonier at, the, at their request. Uh, to ask the batonier to allow me to meet with Mr. Rousse Sabagina. But just like Vincent, um, the, the, the batonier was nowhere to be found, and I was not able, never able to actually uh, be able to meet with Mr. Rousse Sabagina during my stay in Rwanda. And um, I have another client that I was supposed to meet, for whom I'm, I'm have, I have a standing authorization to meet with him in uh, the prison where he's detained. And although in the past I, I was always able to meet with him without any difficulties, this time around, when we arrived at the prison to meet with him, we were told that, that the executive secretary of the bar has actually um, withdrawn my authorization I, and I was left before the prison gate not being allowed to meet with that person at all. So I don't know if it, it is because of Rousse Sabagini's case, but I can see that there is a certain uh, deterioration in allowing people in Rwanda to be able to meet with their um, lawyer of choice. This, this man I was supposed to meet as a case in Canada. The reason why I wanted to meet him, just like Einstein, had nothing to do uh, with, the, with the, the case in Rwanda, but I was nevertheless completely blocked from having access to my client over there. So it, it's a real, um, it's a real, uh, it's, it's, it's really painful to see that. The, the possibility for one accused to see a lawyer of his choice should not be impeded in any manner whatsoever by the authorities of the country where he's detained. Thank you very much, Philippe. 
Okay. We'll now turn to Anais Kanimba, one of Paul's daughters, to um, give us a little bit of an update uh, just on what's been happening since the beginning to put everything into context and um, how the family has been feeling through the entire process. Anais, could you talk a little bit maybe about the legal process from the beginning and just update us from the family's perspective? Thank you, Brian. Um, yeah, so as we, as you heard, we've really struggled to, to get access for, to dad and also for dad to have access to his lawyers. Um, and then, you know, as today we hear that the government has uh, given, imposed uh, some lawyers on him, one of them called Mr. Rogaza. Uh, we, our family actually had tried several times to get access to dad before Mr. Rogaza uh, did a press conference on September 6th. Uh, so if you all remember, my father was taken to custody on August 31st. That day is still a nightmare for us. Um, and uh, since then, you know, that same week, we tried to call RIB several times to get access to that. We also had our lawyer, Gatira Gashabana, uh, who's in Kigali, who tried to go see dad um, on Thursday and Friday of that very first week. So we tried countless times to see dad and to talk to him that first week, but we were denied access. And then, to our surprise, on Saturday, uh, September 5th, we saw a press conference in which a name called Mr. a man called Mr. Rogaza was my father's lawyer. Of course, we did not accept that because we had not spoken to him. Uh, we had, as you've seen, uh, Peter, Peter Robinson, Vincent Lurquin, Philippe Arrochet, and others ready to go and defend that and ready to go bring him that, bring him home. But we weren't able to do so because since that day, since the very first day that arrived in, in Kigali, since the very first day we've known that he's been in custody, we've had zero access to him from a legal perspective, uh, which has uh, made it very difficult for us to even speak to him on a personal level and have um, in conversations with him that we can feel that he's speaking freely. Our, most of our conversations with him, we believe, has always been with people in the background because our father you know, wasn't speaking his mind the way he could speak his mind in the past. So that's why we are really, really trying hard from our perspective to have him see the lawyer so we can finally speak to him, we can finally speak to dad freely. Until, to, until today, we have not been able to do so. Thank you very much, Anise. If we can go back to Peter Robinson for a moment, if you might just be able to wrap things up for us, uh, Peter, before we go to Q&A. Thanks, Brian, and I want to Thank, uh, from the bottom of my heart, Vincent and Philippe for having the courage to go to Rwanda and taking all that time to try to provide a competent defense to Paul Rusus of Begina. I think that's the kind of lawyering that makes all of us in the profession very proud to be serving our clients and seeing how our colleagues can, uh, at their own personal sacrifice, go beyond the call of duty to defend their clients. We hope that uh, someday we'll be in a courtroom with Paul Rusus of Begina and he can have the semblance of a defense team. But as things stand right now, as you've heard all of the efforts that the family, Vincent and Philippe and Gutera have made, we still stand here as outsiders watching a show trial which seems to be unfolding in a very unpleasant way. And so we hope that all of those of you listening will help us in trying to ensure that Paul has the lawyers of his choice and that he can be properly defended. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Oh, I'm sorry, Kim. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, we are now going to open to any questions from the media. If you look on the bottom of your Zoom screen, there is a section entitled Q&A. Please type any questions in there. I think that our presentation today has shown that despite the fact that many well-meaning people and groups have called for a, a, they have called for a free and fair trial for Paul Recessa Begina, I think everything that we've shown and told you today demonstrates that the likelihood of there being any kind of fair trial is zero to none um, we have our first question that I would like to um, that I would like to ask and the um, the first question is 
Is there any news from the Belgian government? Bon micro, maybe, uh, uh, maybe Karine and Vincent, you can answer that together and emphasize each other's answers. Karine, why don't you start and you can add Monsieur Lequin. Um, I think Mr. Mr. Lequin should start and I'll add to his point. Um, <laughs>